coffees and careers. We need Bridge a little, logistics. Yeah. We need Ow! A sting every time. You can use that. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> right, we gotta yeah, have a bloopers reel. We gotta release at some point. So. That's right. Hey, everybody. Hope you guys are having a great day. This is Coffee and Careers at Bridge Logistics. My name is Jared Long. I am Liz Alt. We look forward to talking today a little bit more about career fairs, what to do, what not to do, especially since career fair is uh, right around the corner. Uh, so coming up now. So what do you think would be a good topic to start off with first? So let's start off with what to wear. You know, very simply, before you're even walking out of your dorm or your apartment, what are you supposed to wear to a career fair? First of all, I would say let's dress to impress. You're going to be talking to potential employers there, and so that can look like many different things as far as what to wear. Jared, how, how would you take that? Definitely, I wouldn't say you have to dress business professional, but you definitely want to at least be business casual. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for a guy, maybe that's a blazer with no tie or a tie with no blazer. Definitely want to have slacks, some type of dress shoes, or if not dress shoes, definitely very high level casual shoes that you would wear. Think of if you're going out for, you know, an important family event. Let's say for instance, you know, you're going out for your grandma's 80th birthday and it's at a really nice restaurant, dress like you would going to that. Um, and then I would say, Skip the heels. You know, you're going to be walking around hopefully a lot in a big maybe convention center. You're also probably going to have to walk across campus. Heels look great, they look professional, but they're not practical. So you want to be comfortable and focused on that, not focused on how your feet hurt. So I recommend just skip that, wear the flats, be comfortable, but be very smart about how you're dressing because you are, like I said, dressing to impress with those potential employers. So now that you know, you know what to wear, I think the next thing to talk about is just how to interact. What is that first interaction going to look like whenever you walk up to a table with a potential employer at? So why don't you take that? Yeah, definitely. So uh, first, make sure you smile walking up to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, not many people are gonna wanna talk to you if you got a frowny <laughs> face on. I would definitely say before you leave your dorm or apartment, take a look in the mirror, get the flosser <laughs> stick out, You know, make sure there's no Jimmy John's left in the teeth from lunch. But you know, always a good handshake or a fist bump if you're not comfortable with a handshake. Definitely a great way to start it off. Anything else, Liz? So make sure you're making eye contact. You know, <laughs> as simple as that is, making sure that you're locking eyes with the person that you're about to speak with just really shows that you're engaged in that conversation. You know, whenever you are reaching out for that handshake or fist bump or, you know, whatever that first interaction might look like for you. And then, you know, once you've kind of got the recruiter or, you know, that company representative's attention, go into that 30 second commercial. This is gonna be really just you selling yourself. Who you are, maybe where you're from, what you're studying when you graduate, and the type of careers or opportunities that you might be looking for next. Rather than walking up to a table without a plan where you then just kind of stand there unsure of what to say, know what your 30 second is, know what your plan is going into it. It's gonna help facilitate that conversation, make it a lot smoother as well. And the person that you're talking to is gonna notice when you're prepared. So just keep that in the back of your mind, maybe rehearse what that 30 second speech can look like um, and really make sure you've got that down pat. That way you can start off that conversation really strong. And um, I would say when you go up there and you start off after that 30 second commercial, mm -hmm. make sure you know a little bit about the company. What's really nice is that schools will provide the list of companies that are gonna be in attendance in advance of the event. Whether that's gonna be through Handshake or another uh, portal, definitely reach out to an advisor. They're gonna be able to point you in the right direction. You know, go follow that company on LinkedIn. Go find who the recruiters are. Uh, send them a message, connect with them. Uh, it's definitely gonna help you out if you're already connected with them or made some type of uh, with the company mm -hmm. before you walk up to that table you're definitely gonna stick out in that recruiters mind a little bit more a hundred percent and I would say you know with that have a plan going into a career fair career fairs are extremely intimidating if you've never been to one and you walk in and you see just hundreds of tables and employers and all of these people everywhere if you don't necessarily know exactly who you want to talk to or at least you know have that initial plan of where to go to get yourself really comfortable and loosened up for this process it's gonna be very intimidating and you might walk out of there without really getting the most benefit from this opportunity that's provided for you so reach out potentially to those companies beforehand or at least take the time to see who's going to be there and which companies you know that you want to talk to have that plan going in that way you can get the most benefit from this career fair as we said anything else that you can think of as far as you know that preparedness 
Yeah, um, it might feel a little bit weird while you're doing it, but I would definitely suggest bringing in some type of notebook, notepad mm -hmm. with a pen, uh, so that you can take notes on anything a recruiter might tell you that could be pertinent information later on down the road. It's gonna look a little bit weird in your head. You're gonna be sitting there thinking, wow, I look weird taking notes here. Mm -hmm. But trust me, it looks great in the recruiter's eyes. Yeah. And second, you don't wanna forget any information. It's the easiest way to not forget anything. Anything else you think that they should bring with them to the career fair? Um, make sure that you've got some resumes. You know, you are selling yourself at the end of the day and recruiters, think about this, are gonna be talking to a lot of different students. So having a copy of your resume that is up to date to hand out to them either during or right at the end of your conversation with them will really help you to stick out in their mind as well and I know personally whenever I receive a resume from a student at a career fair I take notes on it so that way I can remember who I spoke to and just you know writing down a little bit of information about them. How many copies do you think that they should have? 371. <laughs> uh, you should just take 15 to 20 copies with you. If you think about it you know taking the time to stop at each of these different companies that you want to speak with. If you're doing your research ahead of time and planning it out, there should at max be 15 to 20 companies that kind of match what you're really looking for after graduation or for a co-op or an internship. So I would say that's a good amount of number. It's not going to spread yourself too thin, but it should get you enough penetration within the career fair. Absolutely. And you know, at this point in your conversation, you know, maybe it's time to start wrapping things up with that recruiter or company representative. How do you think we should kind of finish out that conversation? Definitely ask for a business card. It's gonna be the easiest way to stay in contact with them through multiple methods at this point, whether it's gonna be through phone, email, or their LinkedIn if you haven't previously connected with them. Anything else though that you think that they should do? I think you should definitely take the time to follow up with companies after a career fair. If you really had a great conversation and you wanna learn more or maybe get started in the interview process or even just touch base and say thank you for having a conversation, follow up with them. This is where having a notebook and taking notes about a company as well as collecting that business card is gonna come in handy whenever you get back to your dorm or your apartment and you're trying to figure out who all you had conversations with that day. It can be very confusing, so having all of that information just very organized is gonna help you to follow up and really help you stick out at the end of the day in those recruiters' minds. Well said. Thank you. I think that about does it for uh, us here at uh, Bridge Logistics with Coffee and Careers. Anything else you want to add, Liz, to wrap it up? We're going to be on campuses here soon, you know, for these career fairs. We're excited to get to interact with you guys, and feel free to stop by and say hi. Looking forward to it, guys. Have a great day. Awesome. See ya.